Hi, everyone. I'm PJ Kwong for SGS LinkedIn Live. And today's topic will no doubt resonate across the world as we're going to be talking about transportation safety. We don't always think about it, but I can't come up with a place on the planet where transportation and safety aren't at play. So to help us in this discussion, we're going to be joined by two experts. The first is an SGS veteran with over a decade's experience with the company, whose background is so diverse as to encompass stints, stints starting with oil and gas and now in HSE for the last 18 years. He is the global head safety operations, performance management, mergers and acquisitions, which includes transportation safety strategy. Nikolai Popov, thank you for joining me. PJ, thank you very much for, for having me. This is wonderful. Okay, I have another expert joining us. He is the co-founder and COO at Brightmile, with over 20 years of experience in the fields of mobile technology and telematics. Mark is working on making driver risk management smarter, easier, and cost-effective cost in ways that deliver actionable insights to help ensure drivers return home safely at the end of the day. Mark Watts, it's a pleasure to have you join us. Afternoon, PJ. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Okay, so clearly I'm in the presence of two big time experts in this field, but do you want to know who else is here? All of the audience from everywhere. So as we check out the uh, comments, you can see where everyone is from, uh, like Zuari, who's from Tunisia. I want to say welcome one and all. We are so happy to have you with us today. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's get chatting. Um, Nikolai, um, I know that Safety Month just wrapped up at SGS, uh, and this year's theme was transportation safety. What is Safety Month, and why did you choose this year's theme? Uh, PJ, uh, Safety Month, um, it's a special period when uh, SGS celebrates success in HSC, invite employees and some other stakeholders to participate, to share ideas, and uh, to have some fun, of course. One secret, though, so, uh, we always had a general global theme, but affiliates are free to add their own ideas on top of that. And second, why transportation safety and why this year? Uh, second part of your question. It's a necessity for almost all our daily activity to drive. For some of our people, being on the road is their second nature. And we have our own share of incidents on the roads but also growing concern of distraction as one of the main causes of these incidents. So knowing why and how to manage the risk is very important. But in the same time, it always comes to attention that just a simple driver training will not solve all our transportation risks. It takes a village to change. Myself as a global manager in charge uh, is, is, uh, is the one who deploys the transportation safety strategy and 50 months this year is that moment when we can embrace all our employees in this journey. So what this is what safety month is. You know, what I love what you just said about safety month is yes, you're the global head. Yes, safety strategy. But it sounded like you also said fun, Nikolai. Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know what? I like fun. And Mark, we're going to talk some fun with you as well. But uh, and we're going to talk Bright Mile and telematics in a couple of minutes. But for me personally, uh, this is a PJ question. I want to know how you feel about transportation safety and how far up your important scale it falls for you. Yeah, it's it's a great question. And, you know, as you say, it's not just about Bright Mile. You know, I, we've all been, unfortunately, probably witnessed the aftermath of some major or minor road incidents. And it doesn't, you have to go far too far to see them. I mean, one in three fatal crashes out there on the road is to do with driving for work. So, you know, being able to focus on this and, and do something about it and try and really help with that is really important to me and, and all of my team. Uh, it's a huge topic. So I love the fact that it is important for you. As I said off the top, there isn't a place on the planet where transfer, transportation and safety don't, you know, intersect. So Nikolai, I'm coming back to you. There has to be a tipping point uh, for SGS to start exploring non-traditional ways to monitor driving behaviors. What was that? 
Um, yes, uh, yes, thank you, PJ, for this question. Uh, indeed, telematics in some cases is still considered as a non-traditional, although the situation is slowly changing. What was uh, key drivers for us in SGS? It was, I think, two, uh, two factors, two key factors. One is the risk management, another one is people management. First, for the road risk exposure, how we measure it is the number of kilometers we drive for business. And this exposure is huge. It's, I'm talking about millions and millions and millions of kilometers driven every year. And it's a company duty of care to ensure that our employees are safe during all this mileage. But as a second, road users, when they are on the roads, facing all the risks and hazards, quite often without even realizing this. And even for us, it's not realistic to completely eliminate all the risks in the roads. We still, by knowing the risks and knowing how to manage them, can put our employees at some sort of an advantage. Mm -hmm. So, but how would you know the risk exactly when the people are on the roads? And also, how would you communicate to your drivers what exactly is his particular risks? All of these things made us to think from business perspective and people perspective. We need to find some technology to help us to know the risk and to make our people, our drivers aware of them. This was the tipping point. You know, it's so interesting as you're talking about the tipping point, because we're going to talk about the, you know, the relationship between Bright Mile and SGS in just a moment. But Mark, I'm kind of interested when you're meeting with clients like SGS, how far do you take their goals, their tipping point into consideration when you're designing um, your program, your work? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, uh, you know, and we can talk about it a lot, lot more later, but, you know, when we focus and, and engage with our clients, you know, they all, for the same problem, they're all looking at a problem around driver safety and how they can do more as a business. So, you know, for them, the fact that they, they want to take the next step, they want to do a bit more, I mean, it's really important to us to understand all of that, why they're doing it, what they've done before, and really build that into how we start working alongside them with Bright Mile. You know, it's so interesting, Nikolai, you were you were at the point where you knew that you wanted to do something. So enter Bright Mile. How and why did you connect with them? What's the deal? How and why? Um, that was a few years ago. And uh, looking back at that time, it was kind of an interesting story. Um, it, first of all, it was SGS Global Procurement Manager introduced me to uh, one of his new acquaintances who was working on a high-tech incubator for the fleet car insurance business. So they, he said to me that they are working on a, a telematic solution based on the mobile application, mobile phone application. What a nonsense, I thought. I briefly told that this idea would not work, but I agreed to meet with them to listen and maybe kind of to disprove the whole idea and to put that at rest and let me do my business. So we met at Paris. Uh, I remember I also asked a lot of confirmations, uh, scientific studies, hard evidence to prove the idea. Uh, so it was not very promising at the very beginning, I have to say. <clears throat> but then, you know, I always remained uh, curious for the novelty of this idea and eventually decided to try, you know. And, and by the way, a bright mile... Bright Mile uh, provided a lot of information to me in the end, and a lot of hard evidences and scientific studies it was available, in fact, which actually was one of the uh, starting uh, points of the journey. That's you know, how it happened. You know, it's so interesting because it's like any other relationship. You kind of have to be open-minded. And I know, Mark, that uh, Bright Mile is only about four years old. So this would have been around one year into Bright Mile's existence. So how do you remember that first encounter? How, did you know that he, uh, that he, meaning Nikolai, was going, ah, it's never going to work? How did you go into that meeting? No, it's very funny to hear that. We've known Nikolai and the team for quite a long time now. And, you know, uh, you know, back back in the day, it seems like a long time ago, but, you know, three years or three and a half years ago, um, you know, Brightmo was still very early in its in its growth. And, you know, whilst we've got a very expert team and have spent a long time in the telematics industry, you know, we we were excited to work with SGS and I was excited to meet Nikolai. And I think, you know, from the start, it was clear that, he, you know, Nikolai and the team and the HSC team had a real focus on global driver safety. And for us, that was the perfect partnership. And you know, that's what excited us and that's what got us involved. Um, did I know that he was a skeptic no but um, <laughs> um luckily we've we've proved him otherwise so yeah 
I would say so. So Mark, stay where you are right now because I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, I have heard of telematics, um, but I can't really describe it exactly. And I would like to hear from you about the what and the why for our audience. All about telematics, over to you. Yeah, you know, telematics is a is an overused word. And I think if you go back to history, telematics has been around for a long time. And, and you know, it's it basically means taking data from a device or vehicle. Um, and it's used in the word telematics is used for so many different things. It can be everything from how many hours a crane is used on a construction site through to exactly where are my team in to monitor, you know, and pr provide information about job scheduling and, 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 and you know, tasks right through. And use including driver safety so you know when we talk about telematics in in this conversation we're really talking about the use of of data to be able to really focus on driver behavior and driver safety i want to know the exact moment uh nikolai when we're talking about telematics tell me what really intrigued you what was that spark that made you think hmm this could work uh what intrigued me and made me think it would really work first of all um uh, the the way uh, how CEO of Brightmile proposed to reduce administrative workload for uh, for our for our managers. He his proposition was that you can use that telematics with a much reduced workload, which much reduced time spent on fleet manager portal, but with exactly the same efficiency or maybe higher efficiency than the traditional telematics solutions. Again, that was something uh, so new for me because I thought it was the core of the telematics project of a fleet manager completely delved into that problem. Uh, so I, for me, that was the point. I thought, hmm, it may work. Let's try it. You know what? Again, I love that sort of open, optimistic spirit that makes all the difference in these relationships. And I also love the fact that this is a global topic. I mean, we all need to figure out how to get around in the world. So talking about transportation safety with my experts, Nikolai Popov from SGS and Mark Watts from Bright Miles seems like a great way to spend a half hour. Don't forget, we're going to have a Q&A at the end of this uh, interview segment. So go ahead and put your questions in our chat window. We'll try to get to as many as possible. But right now, it's back to finding out about more. Okay, this is a question where I'm looking for reactions from both of you. What were the challenges you encountered uh, while implementing telematics? How about any failures? Um, how did you overcome them? Nikolai, I'm going to start with you. And then Mark, we're going to hear from you after. All right. Uh, by the way, Bright Mile was not my first telematic a few years ago. I had launched and managed several projects in, in Eastern Europe and Middle East. So uh, it was a joint experience uh, in my mind to, to share with you now. And telematics as any technology, in, in fact, is just a tool, you know. And as any other technological tool, it can be less effective or completely ineffective uh, for multiple reasons, you know. You need to know all of them. And uh, if I would be short, telematics require a competent and motivated team, people, to manage it smartly. But let's go to some details maybe. Huh? As Mark said, telematics is a very widely understood concept. And uh, one thing which is a challenge uh, you have to overcome is to know what exactly solution you need for your risks, for your challenges, for your, for your drivers. So in SGS, for example, we developed set of technical specifications to know what exactly solution we need and which one which one we don't. Okay. Service provider is a second option, a second piece of uh, challenge. Service provider selection, it is rather in addition, maybe complementary to the technology selection, is another very important point. Telematics is, uh, in a way, not off-the-shelf solution like you can buy and use on your own. Telematics each company has its own risk profile, their own drivers, their own countries of operation. And the service provider is the one to provide technical support, management support, sometimes even emotional support for you to manage the problems. You know? And in SGS, again, to overcome this challenge, we are seeking for, let's say, partnership-like relationships. We expect the service provider is willing to listen to us and maybe work together with us on, on different solutions. Then once you deploy the telematics you want and with the service provider you want, there is going to be another set of challenges you have to think of. Basic lack of awareness of technical solution, failure to set some meaningful KPIs, 
And failure, what is very important, failure to communicate on your success, but also on some challenges with the high risk drivers or to incentivize good drivers. Those are the challenges you have to overcome by regular communication and regular analysis of your performance. Back to Mark to continue on that. <laughs> Perfect throw to Mark. So Mark, <laughs> implementing telemat telematics, challenges, failures, how did you overcome them? Oh, yeah, Nick, Nikolai's covered an awful lot there, and I think yes. he's highlighted a lot of the main the main challenges over the years that we've been working together with a team all over the world now. Um, you know, I think, you know, initially, you know, I'll be honest, you know, and I think as much as um, Nikolai was a skeptic, they were, SGS were one of our early customers, and they were to some extent guinea pigs, you know, if I'm going to use that word. You know, we Oops. were trying some new technologies, we were trying new solutions, we were trying to overcome some of the things they talk about in terms of engaging not just the drivers to use Brightmap, but also the management team and, and to get everyone really focused around these safety programs. So, you know, we've over the years learned a lot and we've evolved the product and the program to really help with that engagement. That's absolutely crucial. And I think as part of that, we've also had to deal with, you know, a lot of um, misconceptions around telematics, people who've misunderstood what it does. And, and we're, we're fairly unique. We're using the phone as our device. There's a lot of skepticism about the phone. Can it, can it sure. truly understand our behavior? So, you know, a lot of the program has been about working on that how do we communicate that how do we prove that to the drivers does that change by country and and whilst the driver safety and the, the main fundamentals you know speed risk distraction uh, don't change there are subtle variations in the cultural view of driver safety so so all of that's come into our program and a, and a really part key part of nick and i's already said a part of this is not just the technology but the program team we have and the way we've built the relationships with the senior team in sgs the local teams and the drivers themselves you know it's quite a unique setup so I need to mention that Nikolai is not only global head for SGS, but he's now Safety Month fun guy and guinea pig. Nikolai, how do you respond to your new titles? <laughs> I, I adore them and I am proud to be the guinea pig in such a nice project of telematics, honestly saying. I, I, by the way, I am I'm, uh, one of the um, a user of telematics uh, when I'm driving uh, a car either for business or for private, uh, I, I do use the telematics of Bright Miles so that it helps me to improve my driving style. So yes, I am the guinea pig. I hope you, I hope you don't feel you're still a guinea pig, Nikolai. I hope we've moved beyond um, that now. He's not an expert. expert. Not only. <laughs> you know, Nikolai, you bring up a beautiful point, which is everybody thinks they're a good driver versus the reality, am I right? So if that's a you audience, please put in the chat window, hashtag team good driver, so that you can identify yourselves in that. But I wanna be realistic and can either of you share either anecdotes or some kind of a snapshot as to what has been achieved so far? Maybe some stats. Let's go back to you, Nikolai. Let's see um, what you think first and then Mark, you're gonna get your chance to share as well. <clears throat> All right, PJ. Um, for these um, result stats or anecdotes, um, I would, I would uh, again come back to the tipping points. For us and uh, results, we are measured by how we know the risk and uh, how our drivers are kept informed. And from that two perspectives, we in SGS became much more aware of uh, our risk profile for each participating countries, where they are good, where they can be better. And for us, two key metrics would be that driver's engagement, once they install the application, one, they realize, as you said, everybody thinks they are good drivers, but in fact, they are not necessarily are. Once they realize they are not really good sometimes, and the uh, telematics show them how good they are compared to the rest of the community, so they can be much lower than the rest of their uh, fellow workers. Uh, they have to also realize that it's a challenge for them to improve, and they have to stay in the application to continue improving and to know of their performance. So that drivers continuous engagement in the application, keep using this application is one of the metrics. And I have to say that most of our participating country drivers do keep using the application all this time. That's one. Second thing is uh, some of the amazing uh, changes we observe after a set of drivers in the whole participating countries realize they are speeding or maybe distraction on the phones are above average. We observed at first increase 
as a realization or as awareness, self-awareness, and then rapid decrease because they understood that is not really acceptable and they are not working in the perfectly safe conditions and lots of things belongs to them and they own some of this risk. So they took con uh, conscious decisions to reduce distractions on the phones, to reduce any other risk factors. So that would be for me the second, the second metrics, uh, steady reduction of some of these risk factors. So Mark, do you have any numbers that you can share with us? To add I to do. The anecdotes? Yeah, Great. I do. I think I'm just going to, well, before we go to the numbers, one more anecdote. I think one of the things okay. that really excites us is the is the continual feedback we get directly through the application from the drivers. They can talk to us and, you know, to hear drivers and to quote one saying, initially, I thought this would be a complete waste of time, but Bright Miles made me think a lot and watch how I drive. You know, that's for me is success, right? They're already looking at their behavior. They're acknowledging what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, and then we look at what that's achieved. And if we look, just go back, Nikolai, and look at the last 12 months. I mean, if we look at SGS globally, the whole team, you know, we've gone from start 12 months ago, 10% on average speeding, which was actually still pretty good. I mean, the team have done a fantastic job. We've reduced that overall now globally to just 7%. And wow. that's bearing in mind that we're bringing on new countries here. We've got some countries that are fairly new to Bright Mile, have not been with us as long as the more mature countries. So it's a constantly evolving program. And for me, that's just fantastic to see that continued improvement throughout the team. So. Mark, I don't want you to go anywhere because my next question is about telematics and um, if it's helpful in reaching our environmental footprint reduction goals. How yeah, can and it's, help? it's a great question and it's a hot topic at the moment. It has been for sure. some time. I think, you know, I think most people are aware that if you if you drive smoother and you drive a little bit more slowly, your impact on fuel economy is actually significant. I mean, if you, you know, just driving, you know, between you know, reduced from 120 kilometers an hour to maybe 110, you know, it's not a dramatic increase, but it can make a five to 10% reduction in your fuel burn. Same if you're looking at sort of aggressive traits, harsh braking, harsh acceleration, you know, they all have an impact on on fuel economy. So, you know, whilst, whilst driving safer, you're also really helping helping the environment and, and even with the move to electric vehicles that smooth driving is going to be just as important you know for battery life and for for, for range which of course is still a sustainability focus you know it's great to see that there are so many different factors that are that are coming into the mix in order to uh, really address transportation safety so this next question is for Nikolai does the technology approach have to vary between the different geographies um, how do you adapt and um, what can you tell us about that all right, PJ. Mm, uh, different countries, so different geographies. <clears throat> Technology, mm, there are a couple of things to, to keep in mind. One is that uh, each country or many countries have slightly different traffic regulations, uh, not only speed limits, but some other traffic regulations are different country to country. So uh, you have to make very clear with service provider that their mapping services are properly mapped with uh, current actual uh, road network in the participating country. That, that's very important to check up front and to keep that in mind. It will help you a lot. Second thing, uh, from people's side, uh, uh, knowing and reading the telematics information in local language simplifies the adoption and keep drivers longer and uh, permanent in, in, the, in the telematics program. So. For the moment, oh, at the beginning, uh, we started uh, our first production site in, with Bright Mile with English-speaking country, because that was the language available in Bright Mile at that time. And then we steadily grew uh, to other countries with different other languages became available in the application. And currently, we are using six languages in, in Bright Mile uh, across the globe. Yeah, that is got. amazing. How many? There's more, Mark. Mark, right? Yeah, yeah I was going to say we're just just yeah. launching Dutch and German actually today. So wow. yeah, so uh, we'll be up to ten languages. So Nikolai, we can <laughs> we can kick off some more countries. So oh, that's amazing. That's great. The great news. Okay, one guys. more one major observation, yes. PJ. So yeah. uh, as far as road safety concerns, people uh, people motivation, people BSs, risk perceptions of uh, being a good driver or not, and actually they are fantastic interest to the application information. It's remarkably similar from country to country, in fact. So asking for differences, there are a lot of similarities here. And these are the really main intrinsic motivators for us to continue growing globally with telematics. So That's amazing. Okay, gentlemen, this is the last question before our Q&A. And I want you to try and answer it in 10 words or less. Um, and remember, everybody, if you've got a question, just put it in our chat window just below this screen. Okay. 
I'm going to start with you, Mark. What do you think the future holds for SGS and Bright Miles' relationship? And then, Nicola, I'm going to go to you. Oh, 10 words or less. I know. Uh, I'm in counting. Innovation. We're going to, we will continue to innovate um, and partnership, you know, continue to work together. So more than 10, but. Close enough, though. Nikolai. <laughs> All right. Uh, on my side, it's a long-term partnership between uh, SGS and Brightmind. This, uh, this is a trusted relationships, and it's based on mutual respect of each other's con uh, concerns and uh, interests. If it's longer than 10, 10 words, sorry for that. <laughs> it, it's 10 words somewhere, <laughs> not in my world, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, we're going to move on to our Q&A. Um, our first question comes from our audience. We've got about five minutes left. Uh, from Asha G, what is your definition of a bad driver? And oddly, she put in hashtag team good driver, so I don't know what that means. Right. Perhaps she wants to know uh, and break that perception, I am the good driver. So maybe she wants to know <laughs> how, how to become a good driver or where the tipping point. For us, a uh, bad driver, we don't call it a bad driver, by the way. We call it a high risk driver. For us, it's okay. an important notion that you are not bad. You are just closer to the next incident than many uh, uh, low risk drivers. And this is an important. Uh, what is a high risk driver for us? Uh, there are several factors we count. Uh, per, it, it, it's, it's a lagging indicators. For example, if a driver was involved in preventable motor vehicle crash, so he could prevent, he could do something to prevent the motor vehicle incident, but somehow it fails. So it's, it's one of the indicators, not the only and not the key, but nonetheless. Uh, there are, of course, some disciplinary related high risk drivers, uh, for example, influence of alcohol, influence of uh, substance abuse and, and so on. That naturally being a disciplinary violations automatically bring the high risk driver, um, driver to the high risk level. But on the telematics side and where the telematics can help us with is um, uh, uh, five factors, for example, in bright mile we measure is a speeding distraction on the phone, uh, violation of regular brakes of uh, increased fatigue during the driving, and actually uh, high-risk driving per se, which is a special concept within the telematic solution, measuring not only the speeding, but also your behavior at the intersections, at the turns, at the road uh, curves, and so on. So five factors allow us to see whether you are a high-risk driver or not and telematic fleet manager portal helps you, or in, in Brightmail, actually, each driver has access to this uh, on his mobile phone. That's a great response. And we have another question from our audience. Um, is, is it possible a high risk driver can become a good driver? Mark, do you want to take that? Yeah, I'm happy to take that one. Uh, okay. The answer, is, the answer is, is, is yes. I mean, you know, we see lots of examples of this. And I think, you know, Nikolai summed it up really well. And I think it's not necessarily about you know, you being bad, it's about your risk profile. And I think, you know, what we see in every country or every team we work with is a, is a difference. There's always better drivers and worse drivers or higher risk drivers. And so, you know, really, it's not something that happens overnight. You know, we, we don't expect people to turn on Bright Mile or suddenly have a chat with Nikolai and the team and magically get better. It's about focusing on different aspects of your driving, working on those, paying attention to what's happening, seeking extra advice. And over time, yes, there's no reason everyone can't be a, a lower risk driver. That's wonderful. Okay, we have one last really fast question from the audience. Um, uh, Mark, it's another question for you. The cockpit full of instruments that would not be a factor of arousing the driver's attention, what would be the most viable technologies in this aspect? I guess is it busy is probably the short way of ask, asking that question. It is. We actually covered it in one of our podcasts recently. I'm not sure if that's going to be public, but yeah, it, you know, the copy of a vehicle is a very, very complicated place and, and OEMs are working to make it simpler. But yeah, I think it's about awareness. You know, we, we talk about phone distraction with Bright Mile. Being aware that you're looking at something, take some time to learn it before you drive. You know, don't take your eyes off the road. So it's it's complicated, but it can be made simpler by practice and by considering what you're doing. So. That is amazing. This audience has been spectacular with sending in questions and, uh, you know, weighing in with Team Good Driver. And you know who else has been spectacular? You guys. I would like to thank Nikolai Popov of uh, SGS and Mark Watts from Bright Mile for this amazing half hour chock full of information. You guys have been wonderful about transportation safety. Thanks for having me, PJ. Thanks, PJ. It's been a pleasure.
it's been my pleasure, truly. For anybody in our audience who is looking for more information, feel free to leave a comment in the chat window. And don't forget to visit our website, sgs.com. Thank you for watching SGS LinkedIn Live. I'm PJ Kwong. Bye for now.